Over the course of human history, scientists and philosophers have questioned the existence and characteristics of the basic building block of matter. As theories have been improved and perfected, six theorists have shaped our understanding of the atom. Democritus was an ancient Greek philosopher who discovered the atom in 400 BC. He believed that everything in the universe was made up of atoms. Democritus' experiment was he took a simple seashell and broke it in half. He then took that half and broke it in half over and over and over and over again until he was finally left with a fine powder. He then took the smallest piece from the powder and tried to break that but could not. So thus, Democritus had discovered the indivisible building block of life at the atom. His model of the atom looked like this. His model stated that matter consists of invisible particles called atoms and a void. He stated that atoms are indestructible and unchangeable. Also, that they are homogeneous, meaning they have no internal structure. John Dalton was an English chemist, physicist, and meteorologist. In 1808, he proposed an explanation for the law of conservation of mass, the law of definite proportions, and the law of multiple proportions. This explanation is... 1. All matter is composed of extremely small particles called atoms. 2. Atoms of a given element are identical in size, mass, and other properties. Atoms of different elements differ in size, mass, and other properties. 3. Atoms cannot be subdivided, created, or destroyed. 4. Atoms of different elements combine in simple whole number ratios to form chemical compounds. 5. In chemical reactions, atoms are combined, separated, or rearranged. Dalton's model was called the billiard ball model because Dalton thought atoms were the smallest particle of matter. He envisioned them as solid, hard spheres like billiard pool balls. So he used wooden balls to model them. By relating atoms to the measurable property of mass, Dalton turned Democritus' idea into a scientific theory that could be tested by experiment. J.J. Thompson was an English physicist, and in 1897, he experimented with cathode ray tubes and showed that all atoms contain negatively charged subatomic particles called electrons. Thompson's model showed an atom that had a positively charged medium or space with negatively charged electrons inside the medium. Soon after its proposal, the model was called a plum pudding model because the positive medium was like a pudding with electrons or plums inside. Ernest Rutherford was a British New Zealand physicist. In 1911, he conducted an experiment that led to a groundbreaking discovery. In his experiment, he projected alpha particles towards a sheet of gold. Most of the particles passed through, which proved that atoms consisted of mostly empty space. When some of the particles were deflected, he determined that a small and dense nucleus was present in the atoms. In his model, the central nucleus is positively charged and is surrounded by electrons with a negative charge. In previous models, people thought that the atom was an entirely solid particle without any nucleus. His model is especially unique because of the large amount of empty space that he theorized. Niels Bohr was a Danish physicist. In 1913, he discovered that electrons orbit the nucleus in different orbital rings and that an element's properties are dependent upon the number of electrons located in its outermost shell. Each orbital ring has an assigned energy and size. The innermost shell was found to have the least amount of energy. He figured out that when an electron absorbs energy, it moves to a higher orbit, and when an electron releases energy, it moves to a lower orbit and releases a photon. The model is similar to Rutherford's model, with the positively charged nucleus surrounded by electrons. However, previous models did not include this orbital structure organized by energy level. Erwin Schrödinger was an Austrian-Irish physicist. In 1926, he was able to calculate the probability of an electron being in a certain location outside the nucleus. The electron cloud model illustrates the likelihood of an electron being in different areas of the electron cloud. The darker portions of the cloud show where an electron is most likely to be found, while lighter areas are less likely to contain an electron. In an image that uses dots rather than shading, more dots can be associated with a high probability. The definite location of electrons cannot really be predicted, which is why the electron cloud model does not assume an electron's location in orbit. Thank you for listening.